Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about brush maintenance. So this may seem a strange topic to some of you, but now that Regal Tip has pretty much disappeared from the marketplace, and Regal Tip brushes are my favorite brushes, especially the classics, we have a problem. And no one else makes a brush that compares, in my opinion, to the classic Regal Tip brush. That's the black brush with the thin wire. We'll put the model up here. But those are no longer available. I'm not sure what's going on with the company, but for a few years, their sticks and brushes have been unavailable, sold out everywhere. Their website is still up, but as far as I can tell, uh, they're gone. So I've used these brushes for 50 years now. Uh, these brushes like this anyway. Uh, and they, they're great. They're great for a number of reasons. They have a really good balance to them. They don't rattle, which is huge if you do a lot of recording like I do. They retract fairly well. The back is great for symbol swipes, things like that. Uh, if you maintain them, they can last a really long time. But that's the key. You have to maintain them. And that takes a little bit of work. Brushes take a beating. As you just saw, I was doing a lot of impact stuff like this. That kind of thing. So you're hitting them together. A lot of times you might play on the rim. So this rubber gets eaten away. Now what I did was, um, to make this video, I went back into my many boxes of stuff that I have. Uh, and I grabbed some of my old brushes. These are all Regal Tip from over 50 years, <laughs> probably. And they're all in different states of disrepair. So we're going to show you today how I repair some of these. Some of them are basically not repairable. Uh, you know, they've done hundreds and hundreds of gigs, and uh, for whatever reason, you know, I retired them. But I'll show you different uh, brushes in different states of repair. These brushes I'm using now are brand new. I was lucky enough to stock up on these. Uh, I have about five or six pairs left. That should get me, if I take care of them, that should get me through the end of my career, I would hope. Maybe, maybe not. And in the meantime, I'm searching for something that I like. I've tried lots of things, Vader. The Vic Firth, you know, I'm a Vic Firth endorser. I like their purple brushes. They're okay, but they're not these. Uh, so maybe I can work with them at some point and get them to make a better, a better brush. So we'll start with uh, the worst example, which is the rubber corroding. And that looks like that. So we'll give you a little close-up there. So what happens with rubber when it's exposed to heat it dries out. It's really, heat is really bad for rubber, any kind of um, long lasting intense heat. If you want these things to last a long time, you could put them in a bag, uh, a Ziploc bag, keep them in a nice cool place. Don't put them in your attic, don't leave them in your car, because this is what will happen to the rubber. And at that point, it's pretty much useless. Now these brushes are very old. These were some of the brushes I used in New York 30, 40 years ago. And you see these were basically, you know, not terrible, but cut up enough that there wasn't much left. So I know this is one of my oldest pairs because of the rubber. And I usually ma maintain these, but these were probably left somewhere over time. And, you know, over 40 or 50 years, that is going to happen. All right. So that's a worst case example. There's some other cases where the rubber starts to crack. I don't know if you can see that. So that'll start happening. You can put some gaffer's tape on there. And then, of course, the wire always gets like this. No matter how much you take care of them, different strands, when you're playing, are going to pop out. And they're going to bend. All right? Now, one thing I do, and I'll show you a picture of this here online, is that I will put a binder clip on the ends of my brushes and store them either in the tube or if not, put a binder clip on top of there, put them in your stick bag so that they can't sort of get like this and then get crushed. Those tips will get crushed, all right? Now, the most important thing you can do for this rubber is to keep it lubricated. So uh, that keeps it from drying out. And you just put it on the rubber. And I do it a couple times a year. And just like that, 
and then I'll take a rag and I'll wipe it off. And you can already see how it just kind of comes back alive there. And that will be enough normally to maintain a brush for 20 years. Some of these that I use are that old, these particular ones. Okay. The other thing you can do with this stuff is put it on the metal. The metal will oxidize over time. So you'll know it oxidizes when it turns this really sickly gray like that. And you put it on there, and this serves to preserve that and definitely helps when you're doing the in and out motion with the brush. Okay? A lot. So I definitely suggest doing that quite a bit. And that's all you really have to do as far as the rubber and the metal part for these particular brushes. Now let's talk about clipping these things. So we'll, let's get a particularly bad one. I haven't gone through these yet. So there's several problems that could happen. You could, when you're playing, you can get one of these strands caught in the edge of the drum and it can bend. That's common. All right. So I'll show you one of those. But one of the most common things is that the tips of the brush, the wire, it's very thin gauge here, will bend. Now, a lot of people just cut that really where it bends. I don't do that. I take the whole thing off. I don't like it when it's uneven. So I, you trace it down and you pull it out and you take some very small wire clippers. This is what I like to use. Okay. And then you go, you push it all the way out. So you're taking this metal and I like to do that on a drum and push it. You could, it doesn't have to be a drum. It could be anything and go right to the very end of it. So it takes a little strength here. These, these clippers, I think I lost a tip on one of them. But when they're brand new, it's easier. And that's it. And then you just discard that. So you could do this and still be fine uh, with a brush. You could take maybe 10 of these off, and it'll still be just fine. So no one's going to sit there and count them. So this one isn't too bad. So I would just go along and do that. The other thing you can do is you can... From time to time, you can space them out because they get grime gets in there from the drum. They get tangled up almost. So that's one thing I do. Almost like you comb it out. See how it fans out real nice there now? That's what you want. So let's take another one. Dude, that's bad. That's terrible. That's actually a Steve Gadd brush, I think. We won't use that one. Let's find another one. Yeah, that's a bad one. So this is one I would do some work on. But first you, you fan it out like that. You don't want to use WD-40 or anything like that on the brush, okay? And there, see, it's much better. So those little things, you know, you can, you can do and keep it going. Now, the rubber taking the impact and cracking, not much you can do about that, all right? It's just going to happen. You can use some gaffer's tape. That's the tape that doesn't leave residue. Don't use duct tape. Gaffer's tape that stagehands use uh, works really, really good. And then, uh, or well, I should say. And you leave it on there, and it should be fine. All right, it's black, too. So the other brush that I really like is the Clayton Cameron brush. And, of course, those are no longer available because they were made by Regal Tip. So uh, I go through a lot of these because I use them to, when I do pop music and Brazilian music I can turn them around they're great it's a great brush so uh, they do not retract so it's really important you keep these in a tube they will tend to take a lot of abuse this one's in pretty good shape all right now this one is an awful shape I think I got this from a guy who was selling a bunch of sticks and mallets so in this case I would cut all these strands off that are stray and then stretch these out and then it would be some, somewhat usable, maybe in my left hand, not my right hand, or vice versa, depending on what's your dominant hand, okay? And remember, your mileage may vary because depending on your, um, how heavy uh, or sweaty your hands are and how dirty they are and how much uh, you're practicing or playing, that's going to vary. So I hope you uh, got something out of this and enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.